Uh, we'll bring the um, outreach committee to order. And Don, could you um, do a roll call? Here, there it is. Here. Mr. Van Amberg. Mr. Ebinger. Here. Here. Mr. Gus. Ms. Mastel. Here. Mr. Capitan. Here. Mr. Campbell. Here. Mr. Steen. Mr. Olson. Here. Ms. Carlson. Here. Mr. Strand. Here. A quorum is present. All right. Thank you, Don. Next item is approval of minutes from February 24th, and they were presented in our packet. Do I have a motion? Move approval. Strand. Second, Kit Strand. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All that disapprove, say aye. Motion carried. Thank you. Number three. Immediate activities, um, the P3 education series and bid completion and transition. Go. So that would be um, where I'm going to make a presentation in the next in the next piece. Okay. Okay. All right. And then and then item B. That would be the key legislative milestones. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's just me discussing through the immediate activities for communications. All right. And uh, and then also, so maybe I have the wrong agenda here, but um, do we just should we just go to your presentation? Sure. Please. Yeah. All right. Thank Share you. Share my screen. One second. Okay, so do you see the PowerPoint slide? Yes. Thank you. So I just wanted to share a little today about what's on the horizon for communications. So um, some of the immediate activities that we're preparing for are getting ready for the P3 um, sharing that education series that uh, will come out soon. Um, we have a presentation that's pretty much ready now. Um, we just would like to polish it a bit and maybe add uh, a, an alternative video element to it. So I think they'll be more shared in the board meeting this week on that. Um, also preparing for that bid completion. So we're just being proactive now to be prepared when we get to the point where the bid is ready to um, be announced. We're um, just doing all the back end work for uh, preparing for the press release and any discussions around that. And also um, during that transition phase after the bid completion, um, just preparing for onboarding with that partner, um, what those elements will look like behind the scenes from a communications perspective. So nothing necessarily to share on that now other than just talking you through it to let you know that this is some something immediate that we're working on. Um, also the key legislative milestones. So there has been a, a lot of great um, uh, testimony that Joel has been um, a part of in the recent weeks. We've had um, great feedback and um, hope that things continue to go as well as they have been. Um, we'll continue to provide updates for that as well, but um, just continuing through this legislative session to make sure that we're as successful as possible and are able to react quickly whenever there's a testimony needed or questions that need to be answered. Um, also, part of the previous two um, items mentioned is just preparing a media development kit as well. Um, for any future 
uh, reactions or uh, questions or things that come up not only during that P3 process, but just in general, we need to have a really solid media kit um, for uh, our holding statements and any um, uh, list of who needs to be contacted in an urgent situation and having all of the bios and pictures and um, info about the project ready so that can be shared easily with the media and they can quickly have what they need um, in a time that we need to turn something around urgently um, and then just have it in general. Also just diving a little bit more into the community engagement piece. So um, Roger, I'll mention that uh, we had met recently with the team and talked a little bit about just some of the extensive list of communications that we're working on. Um, and we're looking at ways we can dive into that a little more, um, being involved more with the community as we continue through this construction phase of the project. Um, so we have some regular meetings scheduled uh, going forward to continue to plan on that and align. So more to come um, in the future. One thing that I touched on in the last meeting <clears throat> was the website. So my initial goal was wanting to have a website um, ready for the time that the P3 bid goes out, but it's going to be too extensive. Um, it's take a little bit too much time. So, um, but we do need uh, a, a new website based on where we are at this phase of the project going into that construction phase. There's different information that needs to be shared. Um, we need to archive a bit of that um, current information. So it is still accessible, but not necessarily as prominent. We're able to show more photos and videos now for what we're um, trying to document for the construction that's happening uh, going forward. So uh, our initial thought is to do a phase, uh, a two phased approach to this now that we're where we're at now. Um, phase one would be getting a landing page up by the end of April. So I just wanted to talk through it with you today to share a little bit about what that would look like. Um, the focus would be redesigning that home page. Uh, so when someone comes to the website, they'll be able to find a new, fresh, modern approach to um, to the project where it identifies who we are, where we're located, what we're trying to accomplish, um, what are all the entities involved with making this project happen, um, just what some of our goals are, and even adding some additional elements for video and photo. Um, just because there's going to be a lot of attention coming at us in the next month or so with the bids. Um, so it would be really great if we have that upfront um, face for the project to tell that story um, through at least a, a new landing page. And then it would be something that could be reworked into the rest of the site that would be built um, throughout Q2 and Q3. So probably by the end of September, we would be looking at having um, the rest of the site be all integrated with that landing page. So it has a new um, fresh approach to just where we're at with the construction phase of the project, um, making sure that they have um, the public has access to anything related to jobs and we can partner with the Chamber of Commerce and um, show how um, there's opportunities here in the community, um, giving getting out any of the information needed during the um, road closures and things that might be experienced during that construction phase. So just thinking a little bit proactively about how we can get ahead of things before that piece of the project really starts to take effect um, at the end of this year or beginning of next year and have that site rebuilt to be prepared for that audience um, that we're going to need to be able to provide information to during that time. So. I'll stop there real quick before I can continue on to see if there's any questions on this piece or anything else that I shared. Any, que any questions for Jennifer from the committee? Jennifer, this is Katie with the Chamber. Um, just wanted to not really question, but more a comment of I really appreciate the um, the forward thinking of, of being able to have a place to post those updates and be prepared and proactive. Because I guess what I'm hearing in the community from the chamber side of things is just 
Uh, I think the community doesn't really know what this project's going to look like as it starts unfolding. And so things like road closures, we've had conversations in the past when there's um, road closures for construction and stuff. And of course, the businesses are concerned about that. So just being proactive, letting them know um, ahead of time for th for this project will be really important to keep good PR on everything. Good feedback, Katie. Thank you for that. Yeah, I think that was a great conversation that we had recently. I think it's much needed for us to get ahead of this as much as possible. So look forward to working on this more with you. Any additional uh, questions or feedback before I continue? OK, um, so the next piece of what has been working on to make all of this kind of come together is just having that consistency. Um, I've touched on it before uh, and we've gone ahead and updated the project templates, um, have a style guide to show those new elements um, developed, updating uh, everything across all the social media channels so we have a consistent look and feel. And part of uh, what I'd like to come out of that when we're um, ready in these next couple of weeks is scheduling some type of meeting for a communications alignment across all of the entities. So it's one thing to update this information and have it out there, but there's so many different um, entities working on this project, so many different people doing um, some, some type of communications that I just want to make extra sure that we're all on the same page, we're all aware of the new branding, the new um, where everything can be found. Um, uh, we all have a consistent uh, a way of how we're communicating the speak that we're using going forward, some of the terminology, um, and just making sure that we have feedback as well on any one pagers that we might need to see, any um, infographics or some kind of statistics on the project. So um, that will be the goal of having that future communications alignment across the entities. It's something that I'll, I'll plan in the coming weeks to um, just have some open conversation to be able to share that information and hear some feedback uh, as well. Uh, and then with that, I will um, take it to an update on the actual project. So we were lucky to have some great weather uh, recently and uh, was able to uh, have Tammy Jo uh, film a couple of drone videos. So Terry is on the call today from um, the core and is going to help talk through some of the uh, updates on the project to give you a little bit more detail. So while she is joining us, I'm going to just switch screens real quick and get to the actual videos. So give me just a second. Can you make that bigger? Yep, I'm going to pull up the a different screen. So just one second and I'll make it full screen. Let's see. Okay. don't see that screen as an option. So I will let's see. One second. Can you see the screen now? For the construction flyover? Yes, Jennifer, we can, and it's larger, so. Super. And Terry, are you on the call? I'm here. All right, I'm going to hit play. Thanks All right. Well, good afternoon, Mr. Chair and committee members. Um, this drone footage was taken last week at the Diversion Inlet site. Um, the contractors started driving uh, H-Pile in the Stilling Basin area, so you can see where the, the red crane is, and they've made some great progress on um, placing that H-Pile. 
in the coming um, weeks, we'll be pouring some more um, dam walls on the left and right. Um, you might remember that there's some, some preload areas. The preload areas will be removed. And then the dam, the additional dam wall segments have to be placed um, within a certain amount of time so the soils don't rebound. Um, we're looking right now at the approach slab and then um, where the gates are gonna sit. So this year also, um, the, the gate bays will become very apparent as the piers are going to be um, poured. Uh, the stilling basin will be poured, the stilling basin walls will be poured. Um, and in addition, um, they'll continue to fabricate the gates, the operating machinery, and all of the um, assemblies for the big 50-foot um, gates. So here we're looking towards the southeast. Um, the water from the staging area will come in this direction. Um, some footage of the H piles going in, in the stilling basin area. And then you can see the stepped area as well. Um, where, where the water is going to come through the gates and then the energy from the water will start uh, dissipating as it goes through the stepped area and then the uh, baffle blocks in the stilling basin area. So this year, I'm um, going to see a lot of progress again uh, as the structure begins to or continues to take shape. Thank you, Terry. Let's switch to the next video of the Wild Rice River construction structure. Yeah. So again, the video was taken last week. We're coming up from the south. The engineer channel will flow through the structure. You can we're starting to form up the approach walls on the left side. So that those um, forms where the left approach walls are going to be and that the approach wall flows through the structure itself. Um, the big slabs for the control structure were poured um, last were the two really big pours. The one was 1,700 cubic yards or about 170 trucks. You can see the right approach wall footings. And a really good shot of the formwork for the left approach walls as well. The contractors also um, placing sheet or uh, H pile in the downstream stilling base, well, just like they are at the diversion inlet structure. So the big activities this year at the Wild Rice um, pour in basin um, slabs and walls. Uh, placing the approach apron or the entrance to the structure, um, finishing up these east and west approach walls, and then the preloads are gonna go in. Um, just like the diversion inlet structure, we're preloading the area where the dam walls meet up with the embankments so that we don't have differential settlement. And then uh, bedding and riprap downstream of the stilling basin, and then they are also fabricating the gates, um, operating machinery, and, and all of the um, girders And, the, and those activities are going on in um, Alabama. We expect the gates to be hung at both structures next summer, summer of 2022. So that'll be a big event as well. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. So that was my presentation for today. Well, we certainly have some off, awesome uh, weather to get the project uh, going this spring, so let's hope that continues. And uh, just before we go to item seven, um, I want to bring up uh, the naming issue. Um, there's been a fair amount of back and forth with uh, individuals on on uh, what name we're going to um, Put on our website and on our, our uh, for our logo. And Jennifer, could you maybe just uh, uh, put up some names that I think you had done this last time, and 
and show us the names that have been used on this project? Sure, give me a second and I'll share that screen. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, let me just know. make it a little larger. So this is a list of uh, names that have been used um, over the last many years. And as you can see, there's quite a variety. So what we've been trying to do is, is put a brand on this that, that can be consistent. Um, and I think we need a little help. Um, some of the names, one of the names we came up with didn't seem to be inclusive enough of uh, Fargo-Moorhead. Uh, another name was suggested and wasn't inclusive enough for Cass County or Clay County. For the area, because this is a this is a large project that brings benefit for more than the Fargo Moorhead area, so I think we want to be sensitive to that. And I think we're struggling a little bit here to um, to identify what we want to uh, put on our logo going forward. And I'm just wondering if um, there's any thought here. I know there wasn't really much from the committee from the last time this was presented. And uh, John, maybe I think John Shockley is on. Um, maybe you, John, can tell us um, maybe a little bit more about the names. Actually, um, before John shares something, do you mind if I just share a little bit of, of how this list came about? Is that OK? Yeah, that'd be fine, Jennifer. Um, so I just want to share that this list is all of the names. So everything that you see here is everything that has been used for the project, whether it's been um, official or not. It's just different variations of the name that have been used in one way or another. Um, so that's how this list came to be compiled in general. And the information that you see um, highlighted in yellow are the legal names of the project. Uh, so what I did is when I saw that there were so many different names being used, um, we need to have some kind of consistency and, and stick to one name. So I had reached out to uh, John Shockley to find out what the legal name of the project is. And that's where these ones highlighted in yellow came up. So um, with that, I can sh turn it over to John and let him share a little bit of his perspective on um, on what he has on the history of the names and and from the legal perspective as well. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair and uh, Jennifer. Uh, so maybe I'll divide uh, my comments into two categories. The first, uh, I'll address the the low hanging fruit. The authority names. There's one legal name for the diversion, and that is the Metro Flood Diversion Authority. That's the highlighted one under the authority. That's the legal name that is in all the contracts that's on the PPA with the core uh, and that is on uh, all, all legal documents regarding the diversion authority, including the WIFI loan application, including the master indenture of trust. And so that's the legal name and that was established by the, the JPA. Um, we've uh, historically used either number one when referencing the diversion authority for example, if Joel or somebody speaks in front of the legislature, generally we'll say uh, we're, uh, I'm John Shockley, general counsel, the Met Metro Flood Diversion Authority or Diversion Authority for short. Um, that's the legal name. That's probably the, the easy question. I don't think that, um, that we wouldn't want to change the legal name of the, the entity that would that would take a huge effort to change the name, the actual name of the entity. Um, the more difficult question is the project name. What do you call the name of the project that we're building? Um, and what people commonly refer to as the 
the diversion project and when Jennifer asked me about this, we tried to capture all of the different names that the project had been referred to over the years. And those are items one through 14. Um, the number one is the official name of the project that was given to it by the, the core. Um, and uh, it, it, I, don't, I don't know if you want to use that for branding or not. It's a, quite a lengthy name. Uh, to be to be frank, from a legal perspective, if if you want to use a branding for the project that's different than the official name, I'm I'm not having any red flags with it. But what I would emphasize is that I think consistency would be good uh, to have one single name for a branding name. Uh, as it, over the years, we've seen different names used for the project, and I think Jennifer is really trying to look at this as can we get one consistent brand name for the project? So I, I can certainly answer any questions you might have uh, about the, the project name uh, or the authority name, but I think the authority name is relatively easy. And my understanding from speaking with different uh, board members is it's the, the issue that um, is really presenting itself is not about the authority name, it's about the project name. So Roger, what are you looking for? I'm looking for a discussion on um, from our committee on on helping choose a name that we can go forward with. Oh, oh, this is Rick. I'll just start it out if that's OK. That would be fine. Okay. Yes. Well, as far as the authority name, John, and if our official name is Metro Flood Diversion Authority, then I think that's what we should be using. You know, there's no Flood Diversion Authority. That's an abbreviation. If we've got a name, it should be Metro Flood Diversion Authority. If we're some for some reason using that versus our branding name, that'd be first comment. Um, second comment. Uh, boy, I'm not I'm not in the communications business, so. Uh, it's uh, easy for me to defer to anybody else. Um, but to me, I, I've referred to it as the FM or the Fargo Morgan Diversion Project since I've been on board. So one of those two makes sense to me. That's one member's comments. OK, and we have uh, Mayor Carlson. Hands up. Yep. Thank you, Roger. Um, yeah. and. And Commissioner Steen kind of stole my stole my words. Um, I guess my thoughts are, you know, the the legal name. Um, my understanding was there was a discussion around what that legal name should be. Um, I think Metro Flood Diversion Authority, and I think, you know, since I've come on board it only a year ago, I when talking about it, I just say Diversion Authority. Um, I think that the project. I mean, there's going to be various projects that are going to be part of the whole diversion authority. Um, and I think if we're looking at branding, we just need one consistent brand, one consistent name, um, you know, because there's going to be various projects underneath it. So that is my two cents. Thank you, Mayor. Anyone else? I see Kevin has got his hand up. Thank you, Roger. Yeah, the the um, FMDA that's that's the that's the governing body that you know makes all the uh, all the rules and signs all the contracts. I I do um, I do like keeping the name Metro in there because it it, it kind of goes um, above and beyond necessarily just Fargo and just Moorhead. Um, you know, I, you know, from a branding standpoint, um, you know, just drop off the name authority and just use Metro Flood Diversion Project to describe the project. That's what I think. Uh, thanks, Kevin. You know, one, one thing that was brought up to me was, you know, this is more than a diversion project. This is really uh, a flood reduction project. Um, 
I know the version name has been used because that is the major part of this, but but it does bring a lot of benefit, flood benefit, reduction benefit to a large area of gas and clay, Fargo Moorhead, um, all the way up to uh, Harwood and in those areas, uh, West Fargo. So uh, that was another consideration I was asked to uh, present. Anyone else? Mayor Mahoney. Oh, yes, go ahead. I'm looking at the list and there's a variety of names. This has been called, but the relationship between the Corps and the cities of Fargo and Moorhead have always been in that particular area. <clears throat> you know, Joel had a name this morning that I think was called Fargo Moorhead Area Flood Risk Project as well. <clears throat> We've got to concur. Some people like something with Metro in. The reason I don't like just metro is that if you're in, many, in Minnesota, metro typically refers to the metro area. Kobachar is on the project, and I think it's better politically to have Fargo Moorhead in part of the heading. Roger makes a good point that it's the area as well, so governor seems to like metropolitan as well. Seems like a lot when you have the Fargo Moorhead Metropolitan Area Flood Risk Management Project, but to your point as well, Roger, it's not only a diversion, it's a flood risk issue as well. Um, I feel very strong that we have to reflect the project as it started in the last 10 years has always included the Fargo-Moorhead as part of that moniker. And I think in our community, that's what a lot of people consider it as well. Little surprised on funding this year in which they just called it the Fargo project in the bonding bill and the Moorhead was dropped off of that. But I think we're all committed to it. Two counties, two cities are very strongly committed to this project. And when we go to Washington, that's what they've heard it as. Any iteration had Fargo Moorhead in it. We've added sometimes Metropolitan to get it a bigger area and uh, no objections to that. But I feel rather strongly if we're doing sales tax and the community's putting the sales tax into it, their name should be on part of the project in the public arena, especially when we're going to get money uh, nor, uh, in the Minnesota side and in the North Dakota side. Uh, everybody in Bismarck knows that this is a project in this community and uh, sometimes are sensitive to things that are a little bit less defined. <clears throat> so I and my team would feel very strongly that uh, FM should be, Fargo Moorhead should be part of whatever name we choose. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Anyone else? I think John, John Strand, yeah, go ahead. Thank you. Is my computer? Can you all hear me? Yes, we can. Awesome. I, you know, I'm. It, this reminds me of times where you end up doing something like creating art by committee, and and it gets cumbersome. You know, this notion of branding and naming and identification. Uh, we're a committee, but I think we should stick to some basic uh, rules. One of them is keep it simple. And and then number two, uh, have it reflect what people think it is. You know, in my mind, I all I say is the Fargo Moorhead diversion. You know, I that's what I do. I in my business world, I I was guided years ago to make the most prominent thing in your business card your name, not the name of the company you represent, and make sure your name's in there. Some people don't even put their name on there, but in my mind, this is the Fargo Moorhead diversion. It's a. It's not the legal name. It's not you know. But it, it. But that's what people call it. That's what it's known as. That's the simplest name. Uh, and so that's kind of where my head goes. Is I would. I would make sure Fargo and Moorhead are included. I don't think we need a a, a, a twenty word name, you know, to make sure nobody's excluded. But um, we don't want to leave Fargo Moorhead out in, as a as a brand goes. The, the name Fargo has immense value in branding. Uh, people say the word Fargo, you don't even have to say what state you're talking about anymore after the movie Fargo. And 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 I, and we're partnered with Moorhead. So that's my my advice is to keep Fargo and Moorhead in there and call it the Fargo-Moorhead diversion. Okay, thank you, John. You see a logo over here. It says FM Area Diversion 
project. Um, Mr. Chair? Yeah, John. I, I think that would be uh, a Commissioner Strand's suggestion would be uh, number seven under project names. It's uh, sometimes a project in the past has been referred to as the Fargo Moorhead Diversion. And then there's also uh, number six, the Fargo Moorhead Diversion Project. Uh, once again, it's really up to the board what you want to call the project itself. Well, personally, personally, I like area in there someplace to at least pull in and um, and uh, give some acknowledgement to the other protection that's going on out there. I'm not I'm not against Fargo Moorhead at all, but Fargo Moorhead area um, diversion project, if that's what we're going to call it, a diversion versus a flood. I know it gets pretty wordy, flood reduction project. So, Is there a better, something better? If I can share just a little feedback on what I've heard so far is the Fargo Moorhead uh, area diversion project would be too long for the branding. Um, I understand the need for, for getting Fargo Moorhead in the branding, but that's where we would have that in other areas. It's on the website. It would be very clear where the project is on other elements that are shared. Um, so we have to be also really cognizant of how long this naming would be because it really shouldn't be more than three or four at the most um, because it would end up being too much to fit in one of those little logos. So I'll switch to the next screen just for a second and you can see what has been created so far and how it gets even a little too wordy for the one on the left with the Metro Flood Diversion Authority. Um, so just to give you a, a little bit of a view of what I'm dealing with from a communications perspective and why having it not only be consistent, but also um, compact as much as possible because for this branding piece, it's very important that it doesn't get too long um, where we can highlight the same information. So we're, even if we called it flood diversion project, we wouldn't be taking away anything from the uh, Fargo Moorhead name and um, giving, you know, um, back that recognition to this area. It would clearly be identified in everything else that we're doing as well. It's just having that logo be as small as possible for consistency so it doesn't become so overwhelming. So. Just wanted to share that if that helps a little bit and I'll switch back to the screen with the name so you can see the the different options as well. OK, Jennifer, we've got some names up here. Uh, let's go to Kevin first. Yeah, uh, just based on what was just said about just the uh, diversion project, if that were to be um, Googled, what are you going to get? You're going to get something anywhere in the country or that that's just a question I have. Yeah, that's very possible. Uh, Rick. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Just, you know, so I was looking at this and I don't disagree that you don't want too many number near uh, words on here. On, for that branding, why not just a Fargo, Fargo Moorhead area diversion? Just take off project. It's what it is. We don't need project in there. That's just my thought. Thanks, Rick. And we have John Strand. I'm sorry, I had not taken my hand down, but as long as you called me, I, I think Rick's thinking is pretty uh, concise there. And Rick, again, you were Fargo Moorhead area diversion. Yes, just Fargo Moorhead area diversion. And that could be the branding piece. OK, I have one, one more hand up here. Uh, Kevin again. I agree. I like it. OK, any other comments? Uh, Mayor Shelley. Thank you. Um, 
I just wanted to um, point out that uh, Katie had put in a comment um, about what is the intended use of the project name. Um, and I'm assuming the intended use of the project name versus a, the authority name. You know, are we looking for a formal name to be used when talking about the project or just hoping to have um, a catchier name that works with the average citizen? Um, and I, I guess I do think that that is a, a good point. Um, you know, we have our legal authority name, which I'm a little more inclined to go with the name that was developed as part of the joint powers agreement. But if it's something that um, we would be using um, in conversations with legislators like Mayor Mahoney was talking. Um, you know, is that what we're trying to do is, is be able to find something that helps to designate that it is the Fargo-Moorhead, um, you know, and taking it away from the, the legal authority. I mean, I don't know if that is a question John Shockley could answer or uh, Jennifer, if you could answer that. Um, Madam Chair, I, I can just, I, I think there's two distinct questions here that the first, I would suggest, you know, the legal name is the Metro Flood Diversion Authority. Um, that's, uh, that name is used throughout all kinds of documents. Uh, changing the legal name is, at this point would be very difficult, um, time consuming. Uh, we don't often use the, the official name uh, with the project. Um, and so in, in my view, I think this is more a question about what do you refer to the project that's being built by the diversion, by the Metro Flood Diversion Authority as it, um, and it's a, it goes to a branding question. And so when you go to the legislature often is they were building the, you know, it could be the Fargo Moorhead Diversion Project. It could be Fargo Moorhead Metropolitan Area Flood Risk Management project to me it's it's a branding question um i just think that it would be good it, whatever name is decided that it would be consistent uh and that we would use that name going forward uh, for branding because it it's been many different names have been used in the past for the project thank you um mr shockley for that clarification um with that clarification i guess then my com my my view is um you know, a little bit more in line with Mayor Mahoney's than to put the Fargo Moorhead area diversion. And I, I guess I'm ambivalent if it should be diversion project or just diversion. Um, I do agree with that the area should be in there because I don't want to lose sight of the fact that it's just not our our two cities. Um, there are a lot of cities that are going to be affected by this West Fargo, Horace, Harwood, Dilworth. Um, I think people, you know, need to make sure that it's just not our two cities, but it, it is the whole entire area. Okay, thank you, Mayor. We have a couple hands up here. Uh, Jim Capitan. Uh, yes, uh, I, I'm all for the KISS method, but I, uh, I agree. I think the authority name should be left as it is, Metro Flood Diversion Authority, and I prefer the FM Area Diversion on the project name, because the area I think has to be in there, like the, the mayor had mentioned, it's not only Fargo-Moorhead, it's West Fargo and the rest of the small cities, but also Cass and Clay County. So I think area has to be in there, but the word project is not. Okay, and then and then you uh, look to abbreviate Fargo-Moorhead by FM? Yeah, FM. FM area diversion. Okay. Uh, then we have uh, Mayor Mahoney. Yeah, I just uh, when you were referencing the Joint Powers Agreement, when we signed that, uh, I think in 15, John, I don't recall, but Cass, Clay County, Fargo, and Moorhead created the Metro Flood Diversion Authority. And at that time, we the JPA referred to the project as F Fargo Moorhead Diversion Project. I think for Jennifer, it's a good way to twist uh, and turn because if you take project off there, we're actually into the build of the diversion. So I do like that suggestion of Fargo-Moorhead uh, area diversion because you're building it now and you're going forward on it now. And I think that if you wanted to launch a new brand that why did you drop project off? Well, we're actually building it now. 
I, I really like that. And uh, Mayor Carlson, I appreciate your comments too. It is an area, all these people are involved. So Mayor FM, all right with you, like the logo shows there, FM area diversion and drop the project. I just think that yeah, the hard thing is when we just talked about what are you going to Google? So FM may not come up on a Google, but Fargo Moorhead would. And I, I do like having the names of our two cities in there. I, I see her little logo at the bottom isn't bad as well. I mean, you could use that as a logo, but when we're talking about it, you might perhaps say Fargo Moorhead area diversion because that logo she has on there almost does it. She could use that in cards and such. And it could have the, the, the other heading on different elements. Jennifer, could you do that uh, differentiation? Your business card might be smaller, but when you're talking about it otherwise, it'd be Fargo Moorhead. So I, I would just say that having Fargo Moorhead area diversion would be a very long name to have for a logo. Also, um, just to share back part of why this flood diversion project and Metro Flood Diversion Authority was used, not only because it was the, the legal name that was used, but so because it interchanges so easily where you understand that it's the same project. So you have Metro Flood Diversion Authority. You could have Metro Flood Diversion Project, but when it's Flood Diversion Project and Flood Diversion Authority, there's a consistency in those names. If you have Metro Flood Diversion Authority and then Fargo Moorhead Area Project, you really don't realize that it's as consistent as the, the other name. So this is part of why you all brought me in to be able to make these suggestions from a communications perspective and part of why these these namings would be so important to have it more consistent in that way. I understand the, the need for the Fargo Moorhead area to be identified, but certainly it's not as crucial in the logo as it is just across the project as a whole where you would see it in everything that we're identifying from the videos and the website and our social media channels you'll see that in that location and that name in there um, but for this logo it needs to be as small as possible which is exactly why um, we went with these legal names because it represents that ability to do that extremely well and still have that consistency across the name of both the project and the authority. So I hope that gives a little bit of insight, but it would be it would be very difficult to have the names for everything um, in in the logo because it would get a little bit too long. I'll switch back to the screen here again so you can see just how long it looks already for Metro Flood Diversion Authority. But again, that's the legal name, so that's why we have to put that for that logo. It is much um, better for us to do just three names at the most. Um, and why we went with Flood Diversion Project, there's that consistency in it being Flood Diversion across both of the logos. And you can see that one is the project and one is the authority. So I'll continue to listen to whatever your suggestions are for the name, but from a professional communication standpoint, um, this is the reason why these names were chosen for these logos and I it's my best suggestion going forward for having that consistency across both and being able to brand um, the Fargo Moorhead area in the work that we're doing everywhere else. It's identified in press releases that this is a Fargo Moorhead area project. It's identified on the website and and videos and and everything else that we're doing. We're talking about a logo where it needs to be as small and consistent as possible. Thank you Jennifer. Rick? Um, thank you. So, yeah, I, I, it's my small and consistent. I understand that piece, but descriptive is also, I think, important. And um, if we, everybody knows what we're talking about, then we're probably spending way too much time on a logo to begin with. But um, if we need to make that name shorter than I take off project, I agree with made, uh, Mayor Mahoney. It's, it's a diversion. You know, it's just the FM diversion, it's the flood diversion, it's the Fargo Mart diversion, and the project just really adds nothing. That, that I see of, of value to it, but that's again, I'm not a media person. I'm just a Joe public who looks at it and says the Fargo Moorhead diversion makes sense. The FM diversion makes sense. You don't need the project, but I do think you need to have the identification that some have said here about the Fargo Moorhead area would be really great. I like the FM. If we have to shorten it to FM area diversion, 
I'm, I'm better off with that than, um, you know, the project. But again, I, I don't, I don't, I don't disagree on keeping it short. Get rid of the word project, and we'll figure something out. Okay. Any other? Okay. Who else we got? I Anyone? would say that, that if we did FM area diversion, the only thing is people in this region knows what the the FM means, but not outside of this region. So when I was looking in this role, I thought FM had something to do with a radio station. Um, unless right. you're so, from, I, so I agree. We should have Fargo Moorhead in there then, just like we've yeah. been talking about. I agree with that. Yeah. Okay. John Strand. Thank you, and, and you know, again, we're we're complicating this, but it'd be like if I had a city commission business card that said JS Fargo City Commissioner. You know, it, it it doesn't work for me as far as trying to tell people my name is John Strand. It's not JS. I think this is a Fargo Moorhead area project. Uh, I, I really strongly think we should just keep those names in there. Uh, maybe the logo visually is to maybe something to look at size wise. But again, I my advice is to keep Fargo Moorhead and I could live very fine with Fargo Moorhead area diversion. Okay, uh, Dave Ebinger. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna wait in on this. I think it's essential to have Fargo Moorhead area in there. These are the entities that make it work. It's where the uh, the the project is needed. Uh, I just think that's a uh, an awful lot of assumption for brevity uh, that, uh, that that we're describing what this is. So it may take a little extra space. May have to redesign the logo, but Fargo Moorhead area diversion seems like the best answer to me. Okay, thank you, Dave. How about West Fargo? Uh, Bernie, do you have any thoughts? Well, as a non-entity, I wanted to be as respectful as possible to all of you and your opinion. Um, you know, having de designed thousands of logos myself in my career, Jennifer's absolutely right in the sense of of uh, how three words is the most. Uh, uh, my my thought, uh, Mr. Chairman, is FM area diversion. Uh, but again, as a non-entity member, I wanted to re be respectful for all of the other people. So uh, that was, that's my thought. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Dardis. Anyone else? Uh, Roger, I believe Mark um, from HB has had his hand up. Okay, I don't see that, but go ahead, Mark. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. One, one. Th this is uh, Mark Puppy with the Home Builders Association of Fargo Moorhead. Uh, but one <laughs> word I've heard a lot is brand, branding. So it, it's what's the point of a brand? Would be to stick something with your audience, right? So who's the audience? For one, would need to be considered. And acronyms are all over the place all the time. Mark, were you are you were you done, Mark? <laughs> Can you hear me now? That uh, yes. Okay. When one word I've heard a lot so far in the conversation here is, is brand, and when we think of brand. That isn't the legal description. You know, I think any legal name can be set aside in this context. Uh, brand, the, the audience would be the public. OK, so the public by using Fargo Moorhead, that exclude makes Fargo Moorhead exclusive. What about Horace, Oxbow, some of these other West Fargo, some of these are other communities that will be impacted directly monetarily geographically how in whatever context including the names the words fargo moorhead makes it exclusive to those communities now if you're testifying in front of congress meeting with the congressional delegation then 
that's one you'd use to be a, something a little more formal. But if we're talking in the context of a brand and trying to build an understanding among the audience who in the context of a brand is the public, we'd want something quick, understandable, and uh, you know something easily to which something uh, we can be easily referred and understood, referred to and understood by including words like project. Okay, that's fixed and finite relative to time. A project is at some point done, but does the, the authority or the operations go away? No, it's sustained as the FM area, area operative term there, FM area diversion, and that encompasses everyone. And, and it's FM radio, well, yeah, that's fine, but there, if you can pick your acronym, but Fargo FM area of diversion uh, wraps it up, I think, in relative to uh, pick the logo. I don't think I hope that, I would hope that an organization or project doesn't define itself or its name according to a logo. But yet FM area diversion is all encompassing and it relates to uh, so far what everyone, every person has said so far. I'll turn mute on now. All right, thank you, uh, Jake. Gust. <clears throat> yeah, I've been uh, listening to this for quite a while. Uh, I really think uh, we should pick Fargo Moorhead Area Diversion. Uh, it it brings in what everybody wants, and uh, <clears throat> I know it's maybe a little bit cumbersome, um, but I think we can make it work. Hey, Jake, thank you. Anyone else want to weigh in? Uh, Katie. Uh, yes, sorry. I uh, thought I'd better unmute and clarify. Yeah, Mayor Carlson, thanks for pointing out my message. Um, what I was just trying to get at is kind of what Mark was just asking too, is I guess what is our intended use of this? So if we're talking about, well, just talking to people in an email or in a meeting of the project, I mean, how are we going to refer to it? Probably going to end up being shortened, even if we say it's going to be Fargo-Moorhead area diversion people are still going to probably likely call it FM area diversion. So I guess kind of going back to what is the point of it? Like, what are we trying to accomplish here? And I would think it, either of those would be OK, depending on what our intended outcome is with this with this name, either laying it out Fargo Moorhead or just FM, depending on what our intent is. Hey, Katie, I'll share back that. So just in talking with people here in the community since the time that I've been here about this project and um, telling them what project I'm working on. If I say to them I'm working on the Fargo Moorhead area project or the Fargo Moorhead area diversion, a lot of people wouldn't know what that means. When I say the flood diversion project, they know that what that means because they know that there is a flood diversion project being built. Um, so I understand that there's a need for sharing that this location is the Fargo Moorhead area and that is done in all of the other areas that we're sharing on the um, about the project. But when we talk to people about this project in the area, when you say it's a flood diversion project, that's when you have their attention because they know that that's what's being built to protect the community, um, which is more important than identifying far the Fargo Moorhead area. It's more important to identify that this is a flood diversion project that is protecting the community. Um, I get all of the different names that we've talked about and why it's important to um, pinpoint this particular area for the flood diversion project. But just keep in mind that it ultimately we are building a flood diversion project and that is our brand. Thanks Jennifer, that's helpful. So. Am I hearing then this is kind of for people that maybe aren't familiar with the project at all? Uh, like not the individuals on this call who know about the project and know what it's about, not you know our business task force that knows what it's about, not that kind of audience, more the audience that are very unfamiliar of what this is. Is that what we're going for? It, it I mean, when we're about to open up these these bids um, in, in just a few weeks and have a more national or even global audience looking at us, Understanding that it's a flood diversion project is definitely um, bigger for our brand than saying it's Fargo Moorhead area diversion. That doesn't say as much to that that national or global audience 
um, to bring them in, yes, it gives us recognition for the Fargo-Moorhead area, but still it doesn't tell them that this is a flood diversion project. And that's the most important thing for anyone, whether it's lo that local or national or even international audience. Does that answer your question, Katie? Yeah, I think so. I guess I would say then, yeah, like FM area flood diversion could be the more formal one, Jennifer, when you're presenting it on the global scale. But again, you know, in, in emails to my committee, it might be the FM diversion folks are going to come talk to us or whatnot. It might change a little bit like that of people shortening it up in a conversation locally. But if that's what we're looking for as a name that can be used on the global scale to identify what it is, then I think it is important to have the FM area piece of it. But yeah, maybe also the flood diversion. That's why I was just going back to my comment from the beginning is what's the intent? So that was helpful to hear the intent. Although on that global scale, um, people are not going to understand what FM area is if we have FM area. Um, there are, it, it only makes sense for people who are familiar with this region. Um, there are a lot of people in that global or national audience who won't understand what FM area means. So. But Jennifer, unless we pick Fargo-Moorhead, there's nothing else here that identifies where this project is. And it isn't I, in think, the authority I think that, either. That, that seems to be fairly important for a majority of the people here. I understand. Members. And um, hey, it looks neat. Flood Diversion Authority makes a neat logo, but um, if nobody knows where that is or FM area diversion, you know, that probably would come up if you Googled it. Fargo Moorhead would probably come up, but uh, it seems to be Fargo Moorhead, um, Fargo Moorhead area diversion seems to be what I'm hearing as uh, something that would work. Tim? Yeah, I just wanted to say we're already known globally, theoretically, in the United States because of Hoven's work in the Senate and uh, OB, OMB and everything else. They always know it as the Fargo Project. So we're, people are well aware of this project. And Fargo-Moorhead, Minnesota is always included because that it, they love the fact that it's a bi-state project. And when we're out in Washington, California knows about this project. Uh, different big pro programs that are doing know about this project and they know it because of the location. So I just want to echo what Roger says is that they, they know this project. I don't really care if globally if people know about the project, but I do care if the senators and representatives have to vote us money know about it and they have to have a location because otherwise there's a California project. There's a Miami dred dredging project. I could almost list five other projects, but they're all by geographic location. And uh, when you're trying to get to when Matt's trying to get money out okay, in Washington, that's what it always comes out. Which project are you talking about? This has been around 10 years. They know which project. All right. Any other uh, any other comments? I don't know where we go from here. Um, Roger, this is Joel Paulson. Go ahead, Joel. I, I just got to add a little bit of humor in because we've been talking about this for a while, and I, th I think it's been a great discussion. But Roger, what what about the Moorhead Fargo area diversion project? I'm interested to hear what uh, Mayor Mahoney or Mayor Carlson may think of that. <laughs> uh, this is Mayor Carlson. Um, I would agree with that. <laughs> hey, if we're going to get creative, Dartis wants to get involved too. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry, Roger. sorry, uh, Chairman Olson. I just had to lighten the mood a little bit. So. <laughs> Roger, this is Rick. Yeah, go ahead, Rick. Well, since we're at past our time here, just a thought. Um, Jennifer's gotten her feedback. Uh, let's see what she comes back with, what she can make it look like, and bring it back to, excuse me, and bring it back to um, the public the um, public outreach committee and see what we think. We've given her you enough know, feedback. Rick, I was thinking the same thing. Let's, right. let's do that, and you've heard. The only, the only heard. feedback I might have about that, though, is that delays us another month, and we have to keep moving on, on the project and get all the we, templates updated and the website built and... And we can certainly have, have, have an impromptu online meeting to take care of that. Okay. Yeah, we could do that. You bet. All right. Well, Jennifer, I think you have direction. And uh, I think we're over our time pushing into the land committee. 
next meeting is April 21st, unless we have a special on this logo. So we'll uh, call for an adjournment. Come on. Second. Second. We are adjourned. Thank you.